Welcome to the MFR Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how you can create a six-figure MFR practice. I'm your host, Heather Hommel. Not only have I been practicing MFR for 11 years, I'm also a life and business coach, especially for MFR therapists. My goal is for you to understand how to get fully booked, how to talk to your clients, and how to make sure they understand what's possible for them with MFR treatment. I'm here to help you stop under earning, overworking, and burning out. I'll lend support so you can create the MFR practice you've always wanted. Learn how you can do it too, even if you live in a tiny town, and even if you're just starting out, and even if you've ran your practice for years. Let's go. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the MFR Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Coach Heather Hommel. I coach MFR therapists on how to get fully booked in your MFR only business and then how to scale beyond fully book and create lots of time off and lots of money and organization in your business inside my mastermind. Today, I want to talk to you about some things that came up when I was doing my last webinar. I had people on the webinar that had questions about what to do when you don't believe in MFR or you're having trouble reconciling the MFR fully works in the way that we're trained to believe that it works. So I don't believe that this thought has to be a problem. I think that we're going to uncover some things inside this podcast and help those of you that are going through this. If you struggle with any kind of identity issues around myofascial working for you or for your clients. So let's get into it. What are you supposed to do if you have decided you love MFR, but you don't quite believe that it works in the way that you've been trained that it works. So a couple of things. One, you probably haven't had enough training yet. And two, you probably haven't had enough MFR therapy for yourself yet, right? These are solvable issues. You can continue to get training by going to seminars and experiencing MFR through seminars and learning more by sitting through hours and hours and hours of training. You can go to Malvern or Therapy on the Rocks and have a skill enhancement seminar where you do 40 hours of side-by-side guided treatment with a skilled therapist at John's Clinic. So that's at Therapy on the Rocks or in the Malvern Treatment Center, the sanctuary. The benefits to doing that is you are guided by an expert, a beyond an expert person. You know, if you're getting trained by Val or Rob, those two individuals have worked side by side with John for decades, and they are going to give you the best hands-on experience and guidance while you treat real live patients in those settings, patients that are there for intensives. And I think when you witness that and you witness the changes that are possible in 40 hours of treatment, you are transformed, like your belief will be transformed. And if it's not, that's okay too. No one is here to convince you that myofascial release works. That is going to be your work and not for somebody externally to convince you. So I also want you to think about it in that way. Outside of doing a skill enhancement or going to seminars individually, getting treatment for yourself is going to be very, very critical. I have had lots of people, not lots of people, but several therapists come into coaching recently who never had MFR treatments for themselves. That's okay. Like they're so new. They just haven't had time to have a treatment yet. But these are the therapists that I see struggle the most in reconciling whether or not they can talk about and sell MFR and whether or not they truly believe that MFR works. Again, this isn't a problem. You're just new on the journey and you're going to figure these things out. And nothing has to be done in a hurry. We don't have to rush to belief. We don't have to convince ourselves that this works. So wherever you are on the journey, just stay with me in this moment that Everything is okay, even if you aren't quite believing yet that MFR works the way that you've been told that it works. So getting treatment for yourself. The good news is, is that I really feel like our industry as a whole is evolving and changing. And there are more and more and more therapists available to give you 
treatments. They are becoming mainstream in the fact that you can find people easier. Thanks to the internet, you know, you have much more access to Google, finding people, getting on their schedule, and many, many more therapists are coming up, meeting where the times are. You know, we no longer look in the yellow pages for products and services. We look on Google, we do internet searches, and that is how we find the services that we use nowadays. So if you don't have online booking, please get online booking. It makes it so much easier for people to find you, land on your page, land on your scheduling device, and go ahead and book a session with you. So if you are in that stage of your business or stage of pre-business where you are a therapist, you've had a couple of seminars, one to three seminars, and you're still like, I don't know, like, I want to do this, but I don't know if I believe in it. I just want you to question like really in your gut, in your being, why do you want to be an MFR therapist? What is it about myofascial release that makes you want to believe in it? And that makes you want to do that as the modality, as the treatment for the way you are going to treat your patients. I think what happens is we have a little crisis of identity when we have all of this other schooling and training in whatever place we come from, right? So like for me, I came from a massage therapy background, a social worker background, found myofascial release, and I loved it right away. But there was this little brief crisis of identity where I was like, but I'm known for massage therapy. I'm really good at giving deep tissue massages. Everyone is going to be disappointed in me if I change. And I think that's actually what happens in that brief period of time where you're like, well, I'm not convinced if this works and it's really hard for me to give up this other training. You know, maybe you are a doctor of occupational therapy or a doctor of physical therapy or a medical doctor or you've been a massage therapist for 30 years or a nurse. And now you're like, what am I? Where do I belong? How do I fit into this? And how are people going to view me if I decide to do this modality and this modality all? And I want to just tell you that whatever your background is, whatever your training is, It will always be a part of you and none of it gets taken away when you specialize. It only makes your specializing better. I'm going to say that again. Whatever your background is and training does not go away when you decide to specialize. It only makes what you're specializing in better. So what do I mean by that? If you have gone to medical school, physical therapy school, occupational therapy school, speech therapy school, nursing school, massage therapy school, you are bringing all of your knowledge and tools and training with you into your treatment room everywhere you go. The only difference is instead of thinking traditionally and only offering the traditional tools to your patients as an option for relief of their pain or whatever they're being treated for, you are now offering all of your tools, but through a myofascial release lens. I want to tell you a little bit about a personal experience that I had where I went and I had immersive therapy. So I traveled to Chicago. I had 20 hours of treatment over five days. So I had four hours of treatment every day for five days to try to treat disc herniation. And the therapist that treated me was a physical therapist, but she was an expert level John Barnes trained myofascial release therapist. So she not only treated me from her physical therapy lens and used some of her other skill sets, which I needed, but she mainly treated me through myofascial release. And everything she did was through a myofascial release lens. There was no point in time where she had to separate herself from being a physical therapist in order to perform her myofascial release techniques. And I just want you to know that that's available for all of you, even those of you that don't quite yet believe in MFR. But I believe that that 
lack of belief in MFR is more of a identity crisis that you're having between deciding to leave behind what you know to go towards what you don't really know yet and you don't quite fully understand. But just like anything else, if it were easy to be a MFR therapist, if it were easy to be different than everybody else, everybody would be doing it. And it would be easy, right? Because everybody would be doing it. And the thing is, is like most of the time, the things that are worth doing are hard. They are confusing. They take time to study and to learn. And I just want you to give yourself grace and space and time and flexibility to learn what you need to learn, to fill in the gaps, to consume the materials and to practice. There is no race to the finish line. Where's the finish line at, right? You get to decide, what do you want? Do you want to become an MFR therapist? Are you an MFR therapist? Can you identify in that way? And if you can, awesome. And if you can't, I also want to support you too. I want you to know that it is safe and it's okay for you to question things and that there are ways for you to learn this deeper and easier by putting yourself in position to learn, right? So setting yourself up to go to a seminar and be available to listen to what is being taught instead of questioning everything that is being taught. So if you're going there to criticize or debunk or find things wrong, find holes, find flaws, that's what you're going to find. If you're going there to be open to learning the methods and putting them into practice and trying them out to see what kind of results you get with your patients, that's also what you're going to get. So you're going to get what do you put into it. So what do you do if you don't believe in MFR? What do you do? You either figure out how to believe in it and start practicing it, or you decide it's not for you. That's okay too. We want people that want to be MFR therapists in our industry. We don't want a bunch of people that are like, this doesn't work or who don't want to fully learn it. I think too, like there's really no benefit to being entitled to being an expert before you are one. There's no benefit to going to one seminar and then deciding you know it all and not taking more seminars. I do believe that you become more of an expert with the more time and commitment that you put into practice where you have hands-on patients and not waiting to start to put it into practice. I remember at my first seminars, John always said, you know enough to go and treat all of your patients with this information, like with these tools, with all of the things you've learned here, like go home, go to your practice and put it into action. Don't wait. And he's right. A lot of people want to be perfectionists and they want to wait until they know it all and then start practicing it. And I just want you to know, like, that is one way to do it, but I don't recommend it. I recommend that you take a seminar, you go home, you treat everybody with everything you just learned. You'll be surprised at how many people needed those exact techniques. And do it until you are comfortable doing a full treatment of MFR only. And be willing to be bad. Be willing to disappoint people in the beginning. Be willing for people to say no. Be willing for it to be awkward. It is so worth it when you have a breakthrough and when everything starts to click and when you have that first patient that you change their lives because you didn't give up on MFR and you didn't give up on your patient. It is a miracle. You have a choice. No one is going to force you to be an MFR therapist, but by all means, like if you have this modality and access to this training, please use it to help your patients. So if this is you and you're out there and you are having a crisis of, am I an MFR therapist or not? Just remember that there are so many options available for you and so much support. You can keep listening to this podcast to figure out how to support yourself through starting a business. You can go to another seminar. You can go to study group. You can join my coaching program and get coached on your mindset around why 
you don't believe in MFR to see if you want to believe in it or to see where the thought gaps are. Just keep going is going to be my best advice to you. And keep saying that you don't understand. Keep getting help until you understand. Keep searching for the answers. And also at the same time, just be willing to let it be a little confusing and messy and know that you can still do this work imperfectly. It will still help your clients. They'll still get results. Don't hide your skill set and don't wait to be perfect in order to put it in action. All right. I'll be back next week with another episode of the MFR Coaches Podcast. Have a great week. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a minute and rate and review the podcast. I appreciate it. For more information, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The MFR Coach. And check out my website, www.themfrcoach.com for more information. If you are currently not working 20 hours or less and making six figures in your MFR business, I want to help you change that. Make sure you tune into the show and get on my email list so you never miss out on important trainings and information. To be the first to find out when we are enrolling next for my 12-month business foundations coaching program, get on that email list at www.themfrcoach.com backslash join. Inside this program, you'll learn how to raise your rate, overcome objections, and sell MFR. You'll become the MFR therapist that never under earns and never burns out. It's up to us to make MFR mainstream, and it starts with you and your successful MFR practice. See you next week.